OK, we're going to turn to the, the word of God now and um, we're going to take communion together in a moment. But first of all, I wanted to bring you an encouragement from the life of David in the Old Testament. So I'm going to read a few verses in a moment from 1 Samuel 22. This is something I, I just feel that God put on my heart to share with you. It very much comes from my, my heart. It relates to a time when David's life uh, was not going so well. It was a time when he was in fear for his life and that he was forced to take refuge in a cave. We often refer to David as King David because he later became king over Israel. At this stage, he had been anointed to be king, but he'd yet to be appointed. So it was in that time in between. And, and instead of being king, the existing king, King Saul, was after him, was chasing him down like cat and mouse all over the, the country with the sole intention of finding him and killing him. So David went from place to place and eventually ended up hiding in the back of a cave and it was cold and it was damp and it didn't even have a, a water supply and worst of all he was stuck there this verse this uh, this was not the high point of of david's life he wrote psalm 142 while he was in this cave and that gives some insight into how he was feeling about this it, uses phrases like my spirit grows faint within me men have hidden a snare for me i have no refuge and then he cries out set me free from my prison this was david in lockdown well for the last seven weeks we have been in lockdown this wasn't what i was planning to do this year and i i doubt it was what you were planning either in many ways, it is, well, it's pants, not least because I long for us to be together as a, as a church in one place. I guess there have also been some upsides, time with family, time in the garden, time to spend with God. And it was as I was spending some time with God and just reading these verses that I felt God speaking to me. And actually, I just felt God speaking to us as a a church as a whole. Let me just read the, the passage to you from uh, it's just a few verses from 1 Samuel 22. It says, David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered round him and he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. From there, David went to Mizpah in Moab and said to the king of Moab, would you let my father and mother come and stay with you until I learn what God will do for me? So he left them with the king of Moab and they stayed with him as long as David was in the stronghold. But the prophet Gad said to David, do not stay in the stronghold, go into the land of Judah. So David left and went to the forest of Hereth. <clears throat> so I think what we see in these verses here is, is just what we need to know for life in lockdown. So, uh, so let me try and share this with you. There, there are just six really quick points, okay? And the first thing that I felt God saying to me was, my plan for you includes caves. As God has set a, a plan for your life in motion, it includes times when you will find yourself in the cave. God knew what 2020 would be like for you. He knew that so many of your plans were going to be put on hold, that you would be facing a level of threat that you've never faced before. He knew that you would be pinned down at home. So it's important to realise that this is not wasted time. In God's purposes, this time is valuable for you. 
next week we're going to be starting a, a new preaching series. You might have seen it in the, the uh, notice slides before we started this morning. For the weeks that, that follow, we're going to be looking in detail at the life of one person in the Old Testament of the Bible. And that person is Elijah. Elijah was just an ordinary person like you and me. He wasn't perfect. He struggled with stuff. But God used him to do extraordinary things and to be a prophetic voice in his generation. Anyway, what we'll see is that a vital part of Elijah's story was a time of preparation when God was getting him ready for everything that would follow. So, yes, this lockdown is like being in a cave. It's it's damp and in many ways it's not pleasant, but it is also a time of preparation. Expect God to be at work in your life. And it's not a wasted time for Grace Church either. It's hard for me to see clearly what's going on throughout Grace Church, but I know that God is at work. This weekend, yesterday and today, was going to be our Grace Church Together weekend. And I was really looking forward to that. And we had all sorts of great stuff booked. And of course, we had to cancel it. And, and New Day is cancelled and the Connect Festival is cancelled. Is this season a waste of time? Not remotely. God has led us into a cave, but he is still writing the story of his church. And you are part of that story. So that's the first thing. Secondly, make your family your priority at this time. The first thing that, that David did in this time of threat and uncertain future was he made sure that his mother and father were safe and looked after. He actually went to the neighbouring king and he said, would you look after mum and dad for me? Our first priority at the moment should be to look after our own families. Ali and I have got one son who is back at home with us. And we've got another son who is married and, and they are in lockdown together. Then we've both got parents in their 70s who are self-isolating. And we've got siblings and, and their families. Don't neglect to look after your family. God has put you in your family for a reason. Don't just uh, assume that they're getting on OK. Give them a call. Find out. Ask after them. In general, I'm not the best at communicating with my family. But even I have been finding that I'm checking in with my family more than I used to. And that's a good thing. If you have family in the house with you, then, then this is probably a very unusual time because children are at home from school and, and you're trying to work and, it, and it's all really weird. There are real pressures that that brings. But I believe it is also the gift of God to you. If you do nothing else through this lockdown, then make sure you invest in the care and the well-being and the joy of your family. And you would have done a good thing. This is a, a real opportunity for. So I just, oh, lost my plate. That's something I don't normally do. And I'm preaching there. Scroll and lost it. Well, hey, this is a real opportunity. Is what I'm saying for you to demonstrate the love of God. As you serve your family. So prioritize your family at this time. One way of serving, this is what I was going to say, this is why I forgot. One way of serving your husband or your wife at this time is just letting them get out for, of the house for a walk. And, uh, and, and so that's something, you know, just get into their own space for, for a while. And like David, don't neglect your wider family too. If, if you need to sacrifice something in order to put measures in place for your wider family, then that is a good thing. That's what David did. It doesn't say that, that God was pleased with what he did, but I just feel he was because it reflects God's heart of compassion. Here was David, the warrior battle king, leader of men. First of all, just checking that mum and dad were OK. 
my parents live some distance away, which is a challenge. I know there are people who are getting the shopping in for them. Others are helping out, but it's still, in some sense, is my responsibility. And so David de delegated to the, the king of Moab, but he didn't abdicate his responsibility. He still wanted to know that it was all being sorted. So at this time, make your family, wherever they are, your priority. That's the second thing. Thirdly, this is a time to greet surprising newcomers. It wasn't just David's family that joined him in the cave, but also a whole bunch of other people found their way there and decided to stay with David. These were all people who were in distress or in debt or were discontented. It was all the Ds. Perhaps it was D for David. I mean, he probably wished he'd been called William or something, then maybe they'd all been wealthy, wise and well-adjusted. Uh, I wonder how, how David felt as he saw people walking down the road and he thought, ah, oh, you know, see who God's going to bring next. And it's like, oh, well, your life is a mess. And, and your life is a mess. And your life is a disaster. I mean, there's another D to add to my list. Now, actually, David welcomed them all. And he became their leader. Out of these people came David's mighty men. They were full of gifting and courage and would go on to achieve mighty things for God. The welcome that David gave these people was in stark contrast to what he, had just happened to him personally. You read about it at the end of the previous chapter. There, as David was moving from place to place to, to evade King Saul, he came to a place called Gath and he faked mental illness so that he wouldn't be recognised. And the response of the king had been, well, if you have mental illness, you're not welcome here. And then just two verses later, all the people from the surrounding country who were struggling in some way were coming to David. And David was a man after God's own heart. And he welcomed the outsider. It's the nature of our society that it really only wants to welcome the beautiful people. If you are rich, if you are cool, if you have a lovely family, oh, you can stay. But if you don't measure up to our paradigm of perfection, then we might tolerate you. But we prefer if you stayed hidden. Don't bring your issues here. Well, Jesus's church has never been like that. He extends his welcome to all. Jesus said it's the sick who need a doctor. He didn't back off from those whose society was rejecting. He, he gathered them in. He touched those who were sick. He shared meals with sinners. He was not impressed by wealth and status. Rather, he said that he had come specifically to proclaim good news to the poor. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Who is God going to gather to Grace Church at this time while we're in our cave? I'm praying that as God shakes this nation like none of us can remember, that many, many people will cry out to God in desperation and find a loving saviour who welcomes them with open arms. The world is crying out coronavirus. I am praying Christ revive us. We long to see people come. Are we ready for all the life issues that people bring, ready to welcome people with open arms and show the love of Jesus regardless? Many people are distressed at this time. Many come from complex families and broken backgrounds. Debt has always been a problem, but how much more so as our economy begins to struggle? We may see many more who are discontent as life didn't turn out the way that they had hoped. Well, we can make the most amazing church out of the people that society would usually put at the bottom of the pile. Because we are God's family. 
and we share the love of Jesus. We are all saved the same way through faith in him. We have the same hope and we have the same spirit to live by. So that's number three. Fourthly, this is a time to hear God speak. One of the people who came to David at this time was a prophet named Gad. And he gave a message to David, which was from God and David heard. Now we'll look at the message in just a moment, but don't miss the simple fact that David listened to the message. He heard what God had to say. In fact, just maybe sat in his cave. He had more time available and less distractions than he might otherwise have had. One of the most valuable things to come out of this lockdown for many of us is just that opportunity to spend quality, consistent, uninterrupted time with God. Now, I can hear every parent saying to me now, yeah, yeah, chance would be a fine thing. Have you any idea what it's like in my house? Well, look, God will speak to you too. God will reach into your soul through all the noise and the melee of family life. But Jesus did say, when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to the father who is unseen. There is value in cutting out all the distractions of normal life. So you can spend quality time with heavenly father. Well, the first, the first part of that going into your room or going into your house and closing the door has been mandated for you by our government. Lockdown has brought you one step nearer to a closer relationship with the Father. So see that as the gift from God that it is and resolve to use it for prayer. Use it to read God's word. Use it to contemplate who God is and then listen to what he might be saying to you. My prayer is that a byproduct of this lockdown is that people right across Grace Church will hear God's call upon their life simply because they stopped, they had time to listen. I believe that many will be released from sin and the impact of past experiences as they encounter the living God and he speaks to them. And I pray that you will be strengthened as as, as your faith is built, as God speaks to you, God is with you in the cave and he wants to talk to you. Now, the message that the prophet brought to David was, was interesting, given that I'm applying this to our lockdown, because he said, hey, David, it's time to leave the cave. Don't stay here anymore. Now, there will come a time when we need to leave our homes and get on with our lives. I'm not saying that, that time is now or that God is telling us the lockdown is somehow wrong. I'm not saying that. No, we must wait and hear what our government tells us and submit to that authority. There was a reason, I believe, that God told David to leave his cave. And that is because David had begun to rely on the cave for his security and less so on the protection of God. And, and I can explain why I think that, but there is a bit more of the story that I need to, to just fill in for you. You see, David was trying to outrun Saul and Saul kept losing track of where David was. And then he would get word that, that David was in such and such a place and he'd head off there to, to catch him. Well, just recently, David had come across a man called Doeg and Doeg was a spy for Saul. So when David was sat in the cave, at the same time, Doeg was getting an audience with King Saul and was ratting him out. He was saying, I know where David is. I can tell you. Saul and Doeg then went to that place where David had been and they killed everybody who was there. And at that time, David wrote Psalm 52, which is all about 
stoic. It says so in the title. In that psalm, he prophesies the judgment of God against Doeg. And he says, here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold, but trusted in his great wealth and grew strong by destroying others. You see, David had just left his own cave, his own stronghold in obedience to God. And he says, well, there is a man who did not make God his stronghold. I think he had come to realise, yes, the cave offered me some protection, but God is my protector. There will come a time when lockdown is over and it may be different times for different people. We're going to have to wait and see. We will be free to leave our homes, free to go back to school and work and see friends and go into shops. Don't give ground to the fear that that moment could bring. Yes, your home offered some protection, but God is your protector. Of course, we'll take all the precautions we have to. There will be measures undoubtedly in place and we'll follow advice. And that is right. But don't be afraid because you are safe. Not because of the walls of your house, but because of the hands of your God. So that's the fourth thing. And then fifthly, this time in lockdown is a launch pad for faith. There's yet another part of the story, which, uh, which you can read about in 2 Samuel. Let me just read you just one or two verses from 2 Samuel 23. It's just a bit more of the story. It says this. During harvest time, three of the 30 chief warriors came down to David at the cave of Adullam. Same place. While a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time, David was in the cave, in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water. And he said, oh, someone would just get me a drink from the well that's near the gate of Bethlehem. So three mighty warriors broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem and carried it back to David in his cave. Now, as it happens, David refused to drink the water, but it says such were the exploits of the three mighty warriors. Right now, right across Grace Church, there are mighty warriors. Just waiting to step out in faith and do something for God that just two months ago, you would have thought was total craziness. I mean, it still seems a bit crazy now, probably. But, but do you know what? God has done a work in you over these weeks. Perhaps you have re-evaluated what's important in life. Maybe you have a fresh sense of your identity and purpose in Christ. And suddenly you've, you've got faith for it. You think, you know what, I'm going to do it. It's got moxie. And if you don't think you are a warrior, then, then just look at Gideon, another Old Testament character. He didn't think he was a warrior either. But the truth was that he was exactly the warrior that God needed to do the thing that God was calling him to do. And you do too. You are that warrior as well. Use this lockdown period, not just to hear from God, but to let faith grow within you. Maybe it's faith to do something even now. Pick up the phone, tell someone about Jesus, invite them on our Alpha course this Wednesday. Maybe now is the time to start researching and exploring that new thing for your life. Or maybe the faith that is growing within you is for the thing that you know you're going to get to as soon as this lockdown is over. But, but when that moment comes, you, you're going to seize hold of it and you're going to be like a racehorse released from its starting gate. That's lockdown faith. You just have to have a look at the internet at the moment to see that lockdown makes people do some crazy things. Well, how about you do something crazy for Jesus? Use this time to let faith grow within you. 
And then there's just one more thing. This is a time to see the victory of Jesus. You see, there was another cave. This one was in Jerusalem. And after Jesus had been crucified, he was taken down from the cross and his lifeless body was laid in this cave. And a stone was rolled across the entrance. And Jesus's disciples were devastated. They, they said, we thought he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. This certainly looks like a low point. This was Jesus in the cave. But what seemed like a low point was actually the scene of Jesus's greatest triumph, the greatest triumph this world has ever known. Because Jesus rose from the dead. He left that tomb, proving that through his death, he had defeated sin and defeated death once and for all and paving the way for the resurrection that is waiting for you and for me and every person who puts their faith in Jesus. If you feel locked down right now, either physically in the confines of your home or metaphorically due to the circumstances of your life, remember that Jesus had the victory in his cave and he will have the victory in your life too. If you're a believer in Jesus, then however dark the cave, the story ends well for you. That's the promise of God for you. The victory was won on the cross where Jesus died. Where Jesus's body was broken. Where his blood was shed for you. And before Jesus went to the cross, he took some bread and he broke it and he gave thanks for it and he, he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And they shared the bread and the wine together and people have followed Jesus and have done this ever since. And we're going to do that this morning. We're going to take the bread. We're going to take the cup together. And hopefully you are ready wherever you are this morning to, to do that, to partake in that this morning. If you love Jesus, if you know him as your Lord and Saviour, then why don't you take of the bread this morning? Take of Jesus' body. You have a share in Jesus. He is your Lord. He is your Saviour. And take that cup. His blood was shed for you. His sacrifice in your place so that you might be forgiven and you might go free. So I'm just going to pray and uh, and and then we're going to return to worship, which will just be an opportunity for us all to take the bread and the wine together. But I'm just going to pray first when you pray with me. Jesus, you are Lord of everything. You are the Lord of life. You're the Lord of death. You're Lord of the grave. Lord of the cave. I want to thank you, Lord, for your victory. Thank you that you defeated death on the cross. Thank you that I can be forgiven for my sin. Because you paid the price for me. Thank you, God, that you rose victorious, that you are not in that cave anymore. You are a risen Lord and saviour and you guarantee 
that that resurrection will be mine one day. And I will live eternally in your presence. What a wonderful gospel. And we give you thanks, even as we take the bread and the wine together. So I want to take this, this bread to, and, and wine to remember you, to draw close to you. And in this season of lockdown, I pray that I would draw close to you in a new way. I pray that, that I would draw close to you in unexpected ways. Sustain me, oh God. I pray you would protect me at, at this time. Do something even beyond that, I pray. Prepare me, equip me. Speak to me, oh God. I, I pray that faith would, would grow with, within me in this season. As the cave was the scene of your greatest victory, I pray that this lockdown season would be the scene of mine as well. Take hold of my life, I pray. Use me for your glory. And as I think of everyone across Grace Church this morning, my prayer is exactly the same for every one of us too. Be glorified in us, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's return to, to worship as we actually take...